Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Um, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, thank you for your presence today. Uh, I have some housekeeping announcement to be made. So, sambil-sambil uh, uh, you take your seats while while taking your seats, uh, you just please listen to my housekeeping announcement. Yeah. All right. Um, please, um, inshallah, we will start our program at eight p at eight pm. And I hope that we can uh, fill up the front seats first and let others to fill up the back seats afterwards. And uh, can you please switch off or put on silent mode your telecommunication devices to ensure smooth running of this program. And I would like to ask for your cooperation to rise and clap your hands while VIP enters the hall. And um, also, uh, when, when he leaves the hall, please rise and clap your hands. And for attendance purposes, um, uh, for non-KOKU students, basically for students, we have KOKU students and also non-KOKU students. For non-KOKU students, uh, you have to collect this blue attendance slip. Basically, it's a small slip like this. I just want to show you the blue color. So, uh, you have to collect this from the, um, I think, at the entrance. If you don't have it uh, here now, maybe you can collect it later. So, you have to fill up your details and you have to drop it in the box when you leave the hall. Yeah? Okay, for Koku students who actually, uh, you're fortune. supposed to come with your trainers. So, you, your attendance will be with your trainers. You have to sign your attendance accordingly. Okay, and uh, I would like to get the cooperation of the trainers to also fill up this pink slip, which also available at the entrance. And if you couldn't get it uh, now, maybe later after the program. Okay. Um, and uh, towards the end of the program, we're gonna have a photography session, just a short one, uh, where the VIPs, the president, will be. Uh, together with all of you here and the photographer will be on the stage to capture the moment yeah all right i think that's all for now so uh, once again please put your telecommunication devices on a silent mode thank you Okay, one more thing for your information. Uh, the president will be coming uh, will be coming in the hall using that entrance. Yeah? Using that entrance. Thank you.
That's a cool mic. Okay, I can see that some of you are actually standing behind the hall. Uh, for students, you, can, you may go up to the upper level if the seats uh, down here are all full. Yeah?
Coba. Tes. Coba satu dua. Attention to Brother Naja Nafhan bin Azman. Brother Naja Nafhan bin Azman. If you hear this, can you please come to the MC Rostrum right away, please? Thank you.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we shall start our uh, meeting at any point of time. Uh, just we need to um, finish up some uh, small, small details. It's just that can I get all those uh, standing uh, behind of the hall to go up a level for your sitting? Brother Naja Nafhan Azman. Attention, Brother Naja Nafhan.
Okay, brothers and sisters on the upper deck, can I get your cooperation to sit on the green seating, please? Thank you. Please occupy the green seats. Thank you. Announcing the arrival of Yang Berhormat, Dr. Mazli Malik, Minister of Education Malaysia and President of IIUM, accompanied by the Honourable Rector and UMC members. Maulaya salli wa sallim da'iman abadan ala habibika khairil khalqi kullihimi Mawla ya salli wa sallim da'iman Abadan ala habibika khairil khalqi kunnihimi Mawla ya salli wa sallim da'iman Abadan ala habibika khairil khalqi kunnihimi Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the national anthem Negaraku and IIUM song leading the way.
distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. We will now screen a short safety video announcement. Please pay your attention to the screens in front of you. May we have your attention, please? This is a public safety announcement. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to International Islamic University, Malaysia. You are now in the IIUM Cultural Center. Upon the sound of a fire alarm, or when evacuation order has been issued, please evacuate the building immediately. Emergency situations can be triggered by the presence of potential hazards such as fire and natural disaster. This building has 10 main emergency exits. Please take notes on emergency evacuation routes, locations of exit doors and staircases. Exit signs will remain illuminated at all time. Please take a moment to locate the nearest exit to you. During evacuation process, please remain calm and walk to the nearest exit according to predetermined evacuation routes. If you are in the upper floor, please familiarize yourself with staircase locations. For faster and safer evacuation process, please refrain from talking and running. Once you are outside the building, please proceed to the nearest assembly point and wait for further instruction. Thank you for your attention. This message is brought to you by IIUM Safety and Health Committee. Safety is as simple as A, B, C. Always be careful. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Rabbi Shrahli Sadri wa Yasirli Amri Wahlul Ogdata Min Lisani Afkahu Kauli. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Was Salat was Salam. Wala Ashrafil Ambiya Iwal Mursalin. Wala Alihi wa Ashabihi Ajma'in. In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. Please be. Please, please, excuse me. Praise be to Allah, the cherisher and sustainer of the worlds, and blessings be on our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, his family and his companions. Yang berhormat, Dr. Mazli Malik, Minister of Education and President of the International Islamic University Malaysia (IIUM), Professor Tan Sri Dr. Zulkifli Abdul Razak, Rector of IIUM, Deputy Rectors. Executive Directors, Senior Officials, Staff and Students of the Gombak Campus Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good evening Alhamdulillah, praise be to Allah the Almighty for His grace and mercy that we are gathered here tonight for this session with our President Yang Berhormat Dr. Mazli Mali who is the Minister of Education Malaysia we are very honored to have our Honorable President to be with us today at this Garden of Knowledge and Virtue for this auspicious event. Thank you to all staff and students who are present today. Those who are not here, they will be able to view us via live streaming, inshallah. Tetak buluh, kajang sepuluh, laksana dititing kias ibarat. Angkat tangan, jemari sepuluh, doa di pohon biar selamat. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, let us begin our program today with doa recitation to be led by, Dr. by Brother Muhammad Najah Nafhan bin Azman, a third-year student of Usuluddin from Kuliah of Islamic Revealed Knowledge and Human Sciences. Tafadal mashkura. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Dina bin Karim ala sahabi kiram bin Fatihah. Aum billahi minash shaitanir rajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirabbil alamin. Arrahmanirrahim. Maliki yawmiddin. 
إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا السراط المستقيم سراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المخضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد الفاتح لما أخلق الفاتح لما أخلق والخاتم لما سبق والناصر الحق بالحق والهادي إلى سراتك المستقيم وعلى آله وأصحابه حق قدره ومقداره العظيم يا الله يا رحمن يا رحيم والله thanks belong to you tonight we gather to listen to the inaugural presidential lecture by the new president of our university Y Biro Thomas Lee Malik in International Islam University Malaysia IIUM you deserve all thanks O oh Allah thanks be to you for your continuous favors may Allah make the beginning for IIUM to rise to greater heights ya Allah ya alimun ya hakim please bring us out of the darkness of doubt and favor us with the light of comprehension O oh Allah open to us the doors of your mercy and unfold for us the treasure of your knowledge by your mercy O oh Allah the most merciful of the merciful ones Ya Allah, Ya Fattahu, Ya Alim May Allah strengthen us and guide the leadership of YB Dr. Muslim Malik as the new president of IIUM throughout his tenure May IIUM truly be a beacon of light for the Ummah, for the nation, for the world Forgive all our sins, Ya Allah and guide us throughout this journey, O Allah For that, give us strength, give us knowledge, give us hikmah and bless us, O Allah ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا كرة عين وجعلنا لمتقين إماما وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين. جزاك الله خير كثيرا برد النجا. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, may I now invite our Honourable Rector, Professor Tan Sri Datuk Zulkifli Abdul Razak, to deliver his welcoming speech. Please welcome. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Wassalatu wassalam kafiyah bi salin wa ala alihi. Wasahbi ajma'in la hawla wa la kuwata illa billah Yang berhormat Datuk Mazli Malik Menteri Pendidikan Malaysia Merangkap Presiden Universiti Islam Antarabangsa Yang berbahagia Datuk Sri Syed Hussein Al-Qadir Ahli Majlis Lembaga Warga UIA Para pelajar yang dikasih sekalian Kita melafazkan syukur kepada Allah SWT Kerana kita dapat bersama-sama pada hari ini untuk menerima kembali Presiden uh, UIA yang juga bekas akademik di universiti ini untuk mendengar ucapan sulung beliau kepada kita untuk mendapat inspirasi daripada apa yang beliau nak berikan kepada kita untuk universiti ini mantu bagi masa hadapan saya rasa amat teruja dengan kehadiran kita bersama-sama pada hari ini Untuk mendapat restu daripada Allah SWT Supaya kita dapat bekerja terus Tentang apa yang perlu kita lakukan bagi universiti ini Colleagues, ladies and gentlemen uh, I'm really very honored to welcome the president For his inaugural president, presidential address tonight To be inspired and also to listen to what he has to say As far as his university is concerned he has been committed, and I've said this many times, to make sure that UIA or IIUM to be the best in this part of the world as exerted to be the Oxford of the Muslim world. There is something that we are looking forward to, and I hope. And I hope we are not only going to be the Oxford of the Muslim world, I'm also hoping that Oxford will be the IIU of the West. In other words, in other words, we have a big challenge ahead of us and I'm indeed very comfortable to know that all of us are in this together to make sure that this vision of ours will come through. 
I would like to recall there's a lot of similarities between what's happening today and the kind of experience that I've got so many years ago. When I was the first vice chancellor, was made the vice, vice, vice chancellor in USM in the year 2000, the minister at that particular time was an academic. You may not remember, it was Tansi Musa Muhammad, who used to be the vice chancellor of the University of Science Malaysia. And after that, I went through four other ministers before I end my service in 2011. Let me share with you the best time I had when, when the minister was an academic. He understood what the university was all about. It's easy to manage a university without having to go through all the rigmaroles that other non-academics do not understand. And tonight, I'm very blessed in the sense that I come here as a rector and I've got another academic as a minister of the Ministry of Education. From the last two months that I've been engaging with him and also the ministry, I felt it is the same way that I was engaging with Tan Sri Musa at the same time. The wavelength is the same, we are in sync. And many of the stories that we heard are the stories that are similar with our uh, daily routines and also the kind of things that we want to do. So I'm really hoping that with Yang Bohormat, Dr. Mazli Malik here, he will be able to boost not only UIA, but all other universities to return back to what university used to be. And inshallah, these are the kind of prayers that we hope Allah will bless on us. And also, when I was the vice chancellor in USM, USM was then 30 years old. And we worked through it. And as you know, we become the apex university. Coincidentally, I became the rector here and U IIUM is only 35 years old and just about 30 years old. And inshallah, if the story goes well, we will be also the apex university again in Malaysia. So that, that much of coincidence, I think it is not just a coincidence, that you will make it a reality. And I call upon all of you to work very hard with us. After listening to the minister today and the president, I hope you will be more committed to make this university what it used to be, the pride of the Muslim world, if not the whole world as such. On that, on that note, thank you for coming here tonight. Thank you for assembling here. And thank you for giving your hearts and mind to what we're going to listen today to the esteemed minister. On that note, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala barakatuh. And thank you. Alhamdulillah. Thank you, Yang Prage Tansri, for the welcoming speech. Honourable guests, ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the highlight of our programme tonight and I have the distinct honour to invite the Minister of Education Malaysia and President of IIUM to deliver his lecture. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Yang Burhurma, Dr. Mazli Malik. Prof. Tansri, Dato Zulkifli Abdul Razak, Rector of IUM, Deputy Rector, Prof. Haji, Executive Directors, Senior Officials, Staff and Students of Gomba, Kuantan, Gambang and Pago Campuses. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good evening. I'm trying not to be emotional tonight. I'm trying my best. <laughs> A very good evening, a bit to everyone. It is indeed a great pleasure for me to be here with you, my own family, my IIUM family. I would like to thank the organizing committee for arranging this event tonight. It is indeed heartwarming to be standing here to see familiar faces as well as new faces in the audience. To new students who have joined, in September, welcome to the university. And I hope that years to come would be interesting and exciting for you, inshallah. As a newly appointed and controversial of that appointment, President of IIUM, allow me first to take this moment to convey my deepest gratitude to our constitutional head, His Royal Highness Sultan Haji Ahmad Shah Al Musta'in Billah. Ibni Almarhum Sultan Abu Bakar, 
Riayatuddin Al Muazzam Shah and to the Prime Minister of Malaysia, Yamad Borhumat Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad, for their trust in me to undertake the roles and responsibilities of this office. Just until a few months ago, let me walk through the memory lane. Just until a few months ago, I had been serving as a lecturer in this university. For close to 20 years, this had been my second home. And sometimes it had been my first. Many of my memorable moments were made here, some of which are still vivid in my mind. The moment I stepped into this garden of knowledge and virtue again, I can't stop thinking of all those memories. How I used to jog around the campus and at IUM Stadium. How I used to walk around holding a cup of coffee with jambu batu bought from Pachi Bawah Tangga, crossing the Teh Tarik River and <laughs> and watching all those biawa, the lizards, and most of the inter new international students would call them small crocodiles. Just to look around and say hello to the students. How I, I still remember, each time I woke up in the morning, I keep thinking of going to HS Cafe, as I used <laughs> for over nearly a decade. Breakfast there with my friends, Prof. Zaji, one of them, <laughs> and others with a lot, a lot of faces, and students, every morning before classes and meetings. Sit with people, talk to people, listen to people, be it our academic staff, admi administration staff, students, and even the machi cleaners. I enjoy spending with those I call my IIUM family to listen to their stories and anecdotes, including the friendly machi and kaka cleaners who has so many to share. And not to forget all the park guides and the drivers and also all those people from all those stalls and kedai makan. They were all my friends and they're still my friends. And they still reside deep beneath my heart. <clears throat> Essentially, this is what IIUM is all about. A big family. Students and staff members, be it academic, administrative or support, congregate here in Gumba, nestle amid lush and peaceful green surroundings. And let's not forget our Kuantan, Pago, and other campuses too, to be part of a greater academic entity. The family consists of different individuals with diverse backgrounds, cultures, ethnicities, and nation nationalities truly united in diversity in every sense. This family is distinct from the other public institutions of higher learning in this country. And this is where IIUM strength lies. If you haven't, if you haven't the chance to read the book, The Prophet, Peace Be Upon Him, and Urbanization of Medina, written by our very own prominent professor, Associate Professor Dr. Spahik Umar. Is he around? He's my jogging partner, anyway. I would like to suggest that you do. I find that, I, I find that some of his points are very interesting. If we look at the layout of Medina, especially the location of the Holy Prophet's mosque, we can see that it is very central. This centrality is very symbolic. Because it, is, because it represents the idea of unity. 
how everyone would converge at the mosque situated right in the heart of Medina. Now let's look at our Sultan Haji Ahmad Shah Mosque. It has different doors that we all can go through from various corners of the university. And yet, our destination is still the same, i.e. to be together. To be together and united under one roof of the mosque, which is at the heart of the campus. This is IIUM. IIUM was founded based on this spirit. The university's philosophy is built upon the belief that knowledge should be pursued as an ibadah, an amanah, which Allah SWT has placed upon mankind. IIUM integrates Islamic values and worldview into its humanities, scientific and technical curricula, as reflected in its slogan, the garden of virtue and knowledge. On top of knowledge, the university places great emphasis on good character as part of the education process to ensure that students achieve academic excellence as well as good ethical and moral values. As the Minister of Education, this is the spirit that I hope to inculcate within Malaysia's education too. The spirit of IIUM. Too long the focus had been on academic achievement alone, devoid of any strong emphasis on human values. Thus, the ministry has introduced a philosophy of values comprising love, mahabba, happiness, sa'ada, and mutual respect, al ihtiram al mutabadal, which we are now imbuing into the system. We want to produce Malaysians who are equipped not only with knowledge and technical expertise, but also enriched with good personal character. In the past, when people asked me why I was so loyal to IIUM in spite of many offers to other universities, I had only one very cliche, sentimental answer to give. Normally, I replied them because of IIUM students. But why students? Simply because I believe students are the key to this university's glory. With their keen sense of wanting to learn and to do something new, they keep IIUM vibrant and alive. For all the years I had been here, I found that students of IIUM dare to push boundaries and lead the culture of intellectual discourse which is rarely found in other universities. Imagine the extent of their capabilities if restrictions and bureaucratic hurdles are taken down. And in this era of Malaysia Baharu, the new Malaysia, we will see this happen. As promised, the Pakatan Harapan government is committed to empowering students to stand up and speak up for the betterment of the society. I, for one, have always been a proponent of freedom of speech, particularly for university students, in which I was, not long ago, was a victim of one. But I never considered myself as a victim. I consider myself as a teacher to my students, whoever they are, wherever they are, whatever they have done to me. I am the father of my students. I believe that these young spirited minds have their own creativity. We should not be curtailed by archaic regulations. Thus, I'm pleased to share that starting with IIUM, sweeping reforms are being introduced to give public university students more freedom in terms of expressing themselves. For one, legal provisions which bar students from being politically will be abolished. 
Since IIUM is not governed under the University and University College Act, famously known as AUKU, IIUM will be the first university to have its own branches or clubs of political parties on campus, paving the way, <laughs> paving the way for other universities to follow suit after the amendments to AUKU are made. In doing so, I will sit with the IIUM Board of Governors, Senate and Rector to amend rules that hinder students from partic political participation, provided that students preserve harmony, mutual respect, and never neglect their studies. Furthermore, as part of our move to recognize students as an integral stakeholders to IIUM, the university will appoint student representative to the Senate to sit alongside the management of university and share the aspirations of students with them. <laughs> Too long have the students' voice been suppressed, but this will no longer be the case. In developed nations, students take more active role in ensuring that the management of universities are on track. They can voice out their opinions and views on issues such as academic policies and others that relate to them. This is what will happen here in Malaysia too. IIUM will take the lead whereby its students can establish for the very first time in Malaysia modern history a student union where they can manage their own activities in a healthy manner. This is the new future of IIUM. IIUM is well known for producing world-class debaters. To further enhance the culture of dialogue and debate, the Garden of Knowledge and Virtue will host high-profile international and local speakers to engage in the exchange of ideas with students, similar to that hosted by Oxford Union. Hopefully, this would reflect my commitment to uplift intellectual freedom, which is the core of the existence of institutions of higher learning. After all, RIUM is the best place for a radical collision of ideas, differing thoughts and opinions. In the past, healthy discussions were done actively by students and staff on various topics. Just informally, in small clusters by the river, and at the cafes such as the HS Square, which sometimes they were visited by the security and they experienced a sudden blackout and their names have been taken by the disciplinary unit. HS Square, which is an open space for intellectual debate dialogue and intellectual discussion on areas such as philosophy, literature, linguistic, political science, economy, and even technical disciplines of architecture and engineering. This will continue to happen in legal way and legal means. IIUM will be an open intellectual space for all the students. As for the staff, I am pleased to say that the recent nomination exercise of de deputy rectors has paved the way for university autonomy here in IIUM. Nomination of names were first done by staff through the Academic Staff Association, notoriously known as ASA. But now this notorious association has been recognized as part of the vital institution as a vital association in this university. <laughs> and then from these, the names were considered and subsequently appointed, proof of adopting consultative approach in the appointment of office barriers. I hereby announce the appointment of our new deputy rectors. Do you have music? <laughs> 
I hereby announce the appointment of Professor Dr. Ahmad Hafiz Zulkifli as the Deputy Rector of Research and Innovation. Is Prof. Hafiz around? He's from Kuantan. I believe he's standing now in Kuantan. And Professor Dr. Nur Farida Abdul Manaf as the Deputy Rector of Internalization and Global Network. Please, Prof. Give a round of applause to Prof. Nur Farida. And Professor Dr. Zulkifli Hassan from University Science Islam Malaysia as the Deputy Rector of Student Affairs and who is also the alumni of IIUM. But this is not all. This is not all. Another landmark move in bestowing more autonomy to IIUM. A more democratic process will be introduced in the appointment of academic posts such as deans of the Kulia. The deans will also be more empowered to hold a wider scope in decision making. Furthermore, in recognition of these, of the diverse talents and expertise as well as potentials of our team of staff, be it academic, administrative or support, IIUM will engage with them in growing their own KPIs. There will be no longer, there will no longer be the practice of one size fits all KPI. I always dream of this. Why didn't it happen when I was the lecturer? I was the staff here. It took me a student demonstration to, to make this happen. <laughs> Aside from this, I'm keen to revisit staff benefits package to ensure that staff would enjoy a better welfare as part of the bigger IIUM family, especially among our administration staff. <laughs> IIUM should be the incubator of the birth of local Muslims and local geniuses. When you talk about local as an adjective to its characterized by both local and global considerations, Sociologist Roland Robertson once stated that globalization basically means the simultaneity, the co-presence of both universalizing and particularizing tendencies. Let me be, uh, let me be a bit intellectual. This will revive the intellectual within me. Otherwise, I'll be just like another politician. And how do we go about achieving this? I believe we should go back to the drawing board by first knowing who we are. As homo islamicos, we should understand that our role as Khalifa, our life should be founded upon Tawheed, as what has been highlighted by esteemed thinker, Professor Ismail Raji al Faruqi. According to him, the life and death of a Muslim should have a basis on Tawheed as a guidance framework to his life journey as Allah's servant. By nature, a homo islamicus, don't get your mind go into other homo. As a homo islamicus in an, is an agent of change, we are born to carry out the mission of justice, peace and reform in this world. Malik 2011. It was quoted from Malik 2011, 2011 thesis. <laughs> thus, thus, <laughs> don't worry, students, one day you will reach that understanding. It was quoted based on APA standard, yeah. Malik 2011, page 217. Oh, 216, sorry. Thus, the rise of public intellectuals. When we talk about public intellectuals, we mean the IIUM community taking the time and initiative to engage with the masses 
not just through academic writing, but to go down from the ivory tower to the ground and to be with the grassroots, be with the people, be with the public. IIUM will take the lead as the model for a more humanist, humanistic approach towards our IIUM family to be more insania. Brothers and sisters, oh, I miss these words a lot. It on, they, they only exist in IIUM. Brothers and sisters. You know, being in politics and being a minister, sometimes you got trapped with all the protocols. You have to address people with their titles. And including me, people call me with title, which I didn't get used to it at the first time, but now I got used to it. But here, you can address people with brothers and sisters. My brother, my sister, this is IIUM. <laughs> brothers and sisters, now let me turn to the students and ask. Tell me, what do you think your journey should begin with. For me, once student's journey starts with doubt and confusion. If you don't have doubt, you don't confuse, you never embark with your intellectual journey. A reflection of how a learning process should be about, seeking the answers to clear the confusion. No, I'm wrong. Seeking the answers to lead to more questions, not to clear the confusion, but to bring more confusion. Because once you feel that you're not confused anymore, you'll be satisfied. And you'll be stuck in your comfort zone. You never try to pursue more knowledge. You never try to go to the great unknown territory of knowledge. And you never push yourself beyond the boundaries. So seeking the answers will lead to more questions. That is the beginning of a journey to seek knowledge. And you might even discover it to be an infinite journey. As the saying goes, learning is a lifelong process. My own journey also has its own interesting story. I first met my supervisor, Professor Mehmet Asutai, of Turkish origin, who was once working with the president of uh, Turkey during his uh, postgraduate post life. And then he migrated to the UK and became a professor of Islamic economy at Durham University. When I first met my supervisor at Durham University, Professor Mehmet, to pick on his brain on what to do with my doctorate topic. That was my very first meeting with him. You know, I was very enthusiastic to know what, you know, what kind of things I should do, how to embark with my research. This is the turning point of my life. How many thousand uh, journals, uh, journal papers should I read? What, how many volumes of books should I read? To my surprise, he asked me to go back and read the novel The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho. To, <clears throat> have you read this book? Okay, I know academic stuff that you have read. What about students? Have you read this book, The Alchemist? Okay, go to, go to Kinokonia. I'm not sure whether I... IUM bookshop sell alchemists, but for sure, if you sell it tomorrow, you get a lot of people trying to. Oh, you get a lot of people trying to buy it. <clears throat> Do you know what is so interesting with this book, with this novel, The Alchemist? After my supervisor suggested to me this book, it left me wondering why I was asked to read a novel instead of academic publications. I, 
I still remember, I, I was thinking, is, am I having a crazy professor with me? A mad professor? But after reading the book, it dawned upon me that this book is not sub substantially about my PhD, but instead, it gave me insightful lessons to, to the meaning of life. And it left a significant impact on my journey. My advice to all the students, please read the novel Alchemist by Paulo Coelho. What I wish to stress here, that it is important to understand that reading helps to widen one's horizon of thought. Reading helps one to answer the question of why, and then it, led, it leads to the answers of the question of how. And furthermore, it will push you to think of so what and what is not. If you are confused, read. If you are sad, read. If you are happy, read. Even if you are angry, read. If you are depressed, read. If you are lonely, read. If you fall in love, read books and not your love letters. Are they still exist in this, in this digital world? I think it was only during the period of Tansri and Prophet Sarji <laughs> and all the academic staff. But for students, you, 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 you may ask your parents, do they still keep their love letters? But please don't tell them it was the question that you pick up from the Minister of Education. <laughs> if you fall in love, read. If you are heartbroken, read. But not the Twitters and FB status. If you're hungry, read. Don't eat. <laughs> Bismillah, Allahumma barik lana fima razak tana, and eat your food. <laughs> read Bismillah lah, kan? <laughs> Bottom line, every everything should start with reading. In fact, reading is integ. Integral in Islam as advocated by Quranic verse Iqra in Surah Al-Alaq. When I was promoting the culture of reading through Malaysia Membaca campaign, hashtag Malaysia Membaca, I was asked about how people can get lost because of being a bibliobule. Bibliobule? I don't know how to pronounce, pronounce it correctly. Prof. Farida, how to pronounce it? Bibliobule? No, no, not, not bibliophile. That's different kind of thing, Tansri. Bibliophile, one who reads too much. This is only because they do not consider the last verse, which is the 19th verse, which speaks about prostration and being close to Allah. Indeed, there is a strong correlation between reading, which is intellectual and spiritual. But bear in mind that your reading should not be limited either. Your reading material should not be confined to only your interests. Read beyond that. Challenge yourself to read something which is not familiar to you. Push yourself to read something which you find very strange to you. Explore something new through reading. Personally, I read almost all genres from religion and faith to philosophy and Sufism, right up to politics. To be honest, I wish I have more time nowadays to read. The life of politicians, especially minister, are crazy. People would be envy looking at me reading. They want to meeting me, telling me their grievances, asking me to officiate their events and demonstrating in front of me and inviting me to dinners, inviting me to lunch. And they would be very jealous of me reading. So I ended up after six, nearly five months being a minister of not reading, of not having finishing a single book. The biggest problem within Islamic intellectual discourse is dogmatism. 
which is the assumption of monopolizing the truth that students my thus students my must fight your own urge to be trapped in dogmatism through reading never be satisfied never be complacent push yourself beyond your comfort zone brothers and sisters i'm proud that RUM is a good example of a micro civil society with movements by students on their own without any direct funding and support from the university the example of student soup kitchen project for the poor i laud them for this initiative is it still around they're still around a big round of applause for them the nasi lemak project another big applause for them is it still around the nasi lemak project and a lot of other projects essentially i believe that there should be more focus given in supporting people who need assistance the most this is where i keep emphasizing on inclusivity whether in education or in the higher learning institutions i think people with special needs the oku my students my colleagues you know that you always have a special place in my heart and i will make sure i'm not trying to abuse my power but for you guys i will abuse my power i will make sure that the rector and the senate and the university administration will make iium a safe heaven for okus not only that i still remember when i was still a lecturer in this university i was among the oppo the greatest opponents of those who are using their motorbikes on the pedestrian path <laughs> nothing hurts me more than looking at our disabled staff and students have to go beside the road to pave the way to the motorbike this is insane this is evil this is haram <laughs> and it's very unfortunate our katib never talk about this in their khutbah as if this is this is nothing in islam they keep talking about ikhtilat is haram the aurat should be from here to there which yeah we understood but when you keep reiterating that keep mentioning that and neglecting all other part of humanities and people started to consider is islam all about regulation and punishment and enforcement whereas a lot of good universal values in islam that we seldomly share with others and we seldomly practice in our daily life and not to forget being an islamic university cleanliness is utmost important i would like to see in these coming days as i promised to my students i always made jokes to them if i'm becoming the minister of education god replied my answer at my doha no god god answered my joke with my students there is something with i am you i you am students maybe while they're listening i'm joking they say amen amen so i blame my students for my situation now but this is a responsibility this is a time that i should make full use of my power i want to make sure that i am you am will be the friendliest the friendliest university to environment and please tan sri rector and please deputy rectors senate members and everybody please turn iium into a green university starting by having the recycle or separate waste bins 
all around the campus. I would like to see that happening within the month of October. We must cultivate the culture of waste management. You know which... <laughs> I know my students are laughing. The things that I always taught them and all my rumbling is that the class is all about cleanliness, is all about being friendly to the environment and being eco-friendly towards the world. <clears throat> Let me take you on a journey far, far away with the story of Luke Skywalker of Star Wars film franchise. Do you know Luke Skywalker? Are you a big fan of Luke Skywalker? Or are you a big fan of Darth Vader? <laughs> I'm sure many of you are familiar with Star Wars. But do bear with me as there is a personal reflection that I would like to share. The story of Luke Skywalker, which I like my students to be inspired with it. I'm becoming emotional. What is with Luke Skywalker? I'm becoming very emotional when, uh, when I talk about Luke Skywalker. Luke began his life as a simple farmer on the planet of Tatooine. He began his life as nobody. A small farmer boy enjoying his daily life. But then he left the planet Tatooine. to become a Padawan or a student under the tutelage of the Jedi Master Yoda, who was then nearly 1,000 years old. Luke Skywalker dared to take a big risk to leave his comfort zone with the intention to save the galaxy, to fight against the evil empire. He was only a normal person, a farmer boy, without any special talent. He never got involved in any wars, in any battles. He doesn't know how to play with the lightsaber and how to conduct the weapons. He was just a normal farmer boy. But he took a very unconventional decision to leave his comfort zone and have a faith in his mission. He left the twin planet, ended up meeting a very old Jedi master and something is with old people. When they're getting more older, they become wiser and their words are very helpful and useful for younger people. So under the guidance of this Jedi Master Yoda, he learned his potential within. He learned the Jedi power within himself. Although he was very old to become a Jedi Master then, but he believed in himself. He believed nothing is impossible. He believed that he can change the world. He can change the fate of the galaxy. Even Yoda did not have faith in him and couldn't see his talent. But Luke Skywalker pushed himself beyond the boundaries. Finally, he emerged as the most powerful Jedi who defeated the evil empire and brought justice and balance back to the entire galaxy. The moral of this tale is simple. There is much significance that can be done by the insignificant. Do not ever think that you are one and therefore unable to make a difference on your own. Every one of us here is Luke Skywalker. Do not wait to make a difference. Be more proactive and please take risks. I was once. a normal person 
like Luke Skywalker. But I couldn't bear myself looking at the corruptions that happening all around Malaysia. And I thought that I should participate in the creation of new history of the country. It was the biggest decision I've taken in my life. And what hurt me most is to leave this university. I still remember the day where Datuk Rahim assisted me to pave the way to exit from this university, though it was not easy, but he assisted me along the way. I know it was a very tough decision. Being in politics was never an option in my life. I still remember talking to some of our colleagues when they did ask me, why didn't I join politics? I told them, I'm not into partisan politics. I love being an intellectual, being an, being an academic. I love my intellectual life. I can enjoy more freedom. But reflecting to the story of Luke Skywalker, I begin to decide that I need to leave the planet, the, the planet Tatooine of mine for a bigger cause, for the nation. So we participated in that battle against the evil empire and we won the battle. And hence, the Malaysia Baharu. Never dreamt to be Minister of Education. It was only jokes that I made in, in my class to my students and blamed them for their dua. But anyway, after being appointed as a Minister of Education, I began to realize there is a mission that I have to accomplish, which is to bring back the glory of my second home to my own big family, to IIUM. I can see the huge potential of IIUM. This is not like other universities. This is a very unique university. It is an international university. It is an Islamic university. It is a Malaysian university. And it is a university for all humankind. The potential is there. It has been more than 30 years, but we are still at, the, at this position. So I vowed to myself, I need to do something to this university. So when I was appointed by our head of constitution to be the president of a university, by the advice of the prime minister, I feel that God replied my dua. I think it is my responsibility it is my promise to myself that I will bring change to this university with the help of every single individual in this university. Be them the staff, be them the students, be them the academics, be, the, be them in the administration. I believe we, if we stand together, we work together, we unite together, we can bring the glory to IIUM. Hence, turning IIUM into the Oxford of Muslim world. I told the second president of IIUM when I had a meeting with him. I told him, I may not need a long time. My tenureship is only three years in this university. Time is not on my side, but within these three years, I have a strong faith in my own IIUM family. We can bring the glory to IIUM. He told me, no, you need more than three years. I told him, no, I only have three years. And I will work from that moment to make sure that IIUM will be the Oxford of Muslim world. Helen Keller once said, optimism is the faith that leads to achievement. And I trust that all of you knows who is Helen Keller. 
If you don't know, please Google her name. She was once said, Optimism is the faith that leads to achievement. Nothing can be done without hope and confidence. Please have faith and please have hope and please have confidence in yourself. Please have confidence in the big family of IIUM. Reinstalling the optimism will be the most challenging for me and for everyone. When we sometimes losing the hope, drown, with, drown in agony with this miserable life that we are living, what will be the key to keep resisting is recalling back to the fundamental idea of the whatness or mahia of every existence and not to forget the philosophical substance of this university. Before I end my speech, allow me to leave you with one pantun, eh, with two rangkap pantun, and before that, with the words of Ralph Waldo Emerson for us to ponder on. Ralph Waldo Emerson once said, do not go where the path may lead. Go instead, go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. Let me repeat his words again. Do not go where the path may lead. Go instead where there is no path, but you leave a trail so people could follow you. Bunga dedap di atas para, anak dusun pasang pelita, andai tersilap tutur bicara, jari disusun maaf dipinta, tanam sirih dalam taman, gali lubang tepi perigi. Terima kasih keluarga IIUM sekalian, lain kali kita bersua lagi. Terima kasih, thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Alhamdulillah, thank you yang berbahagia, uh, yang berhormat Dr. Mazli. I may now open the session for any question uh, for our yang berhormat. Yes, uh, can you please go to the microphone and maybe introduce yourself? <laughs> Professor, happy to see you again. You need to switch it on. I'm really glad to see you in this position of President of IIUM, International Islamic University in Malaysia. I just want to say you congratulations and I have a great hope in your personality, in your intellectual scholarship and in your vision. Thank you very much. Bohat shukriya. <laughs> you remember I used to say you whenever I see you here and there in our AU campus. I just want to say one thing. You said just now in your speech that every one of us is important. Please provide a channel. Please provide a channel to every one of us to approach you and to approach other authorities of this university. I am sorry to say, I am sorry to say when I congratulated to you in your WhatsApp message, you did not read my message. <laughs> <laughs> I am sorry to say that still I am waiting for response of my message. It was very, very unique message. And I hope that if you would have read that message, you would have mentioned here in your speech that you received something from your own colleague of this <laughs> university, International Islamic University. Thank you very much. Thank you very Dr. much. Thank you very much. Mazli Malik, Dr. Mazli Malik Zindabad. Zindabad is a slogan in India, Pakistan. For long, long life. Sure. And I hope, sure. and I hope 
there is a tradition in Malaysia. Minister of Education occupied the highest seat in politics. Thank you very much. That is future, future, future PM. <laughs> Thank you very much, Prof. But I need to register this. I have no big ambition in politics, I, and I am a reluctant politician. <laughs> Actually, when I first joined politics, my only ambition is to bring down Najib. <laughs> and to create a new history of Malaysia, and to serve my constituents. After five years, I would like to come back to IIUM as a lecturer. That was my dream then. But God destined, God has chosen me to this very hottest place in, in all ministries. But I need to fulfill a lot of hopes of people. I, I take that as a challenge. Alhamdulillah. But I need your dua. I really need your dua. Uh, so I'm not sure whether PM is suitable for me because I don't think that far. For me, 10 years is enough for me in politics, and then I would like to come back to IUM. IUM where I belong to. <laughs> but, Mark Zeret, thousand apologies, Prof. This is the situation when somebody sent me a message through WhatsApp. You know, this WhatsApp is crazy. Whenever people sending to you new WhatsApp, it will bury the old WhatsApp messages. Am I right? So due to my insane schedule, daily schedule, I normally have the opportunity to read my message at 1 a.m. every night. And sometimes I felt very sleepy. The other day, Prof. Rosita was, was very fortunate because when I opened my phone at 1 a.m., I found her message pop up on the top of the list. So I replied to her message. But st still there are 4,000, more than 4,000 WhatsApp messages still lies beneath of all other messages. But I'm trying my best, Prof, inshallah. In creating a channel, inshallah, Prof, in creating a channel here, I'm very glad to have a small office of mine. It will, be, it will no longer be that office. That is too big for a small guy like me. That will be turned, the recent president's office will be turned into staff launch. <laughs> the dream that we always speak about. It will be a staff launch where all the academic staff and admin staff, you can enjoy yourself there. For me, I only need a small space near the op rector's office. That is enough for me. So if you have any grievances, if you, are you have any message to convey to me, please come to the president's office. You might find the officers there. You can leave it with her or him. And they will send it to me. Thank you very much, Prof. I'm terribly sorry to take him a lot of times. Assalamualaikum, Prof. Waalaikum salam. Can anybody assist? My name. My name is Yaakob. Dr. Yaakob. Shalom, Dr. Yaakob. I am a good friend of Tun Dr. Mahathir for many, many years. And uh, in about November or December, why be? Can we give Dr. Yaakob a chair to, uh, no, to sit? I, I, Take my chair instead. No, no, no. I'm standing. <laughs> I, I, I prefer standing. I prefer standing. Okay. Uh, uh, YB will be in this very hall with Tun Dr. M and Tun Dr. City to launch my granddaughter's book, oh. a student of this university. She is now doing foundation. She's coming here. Finish her exam, and the name of the book is called Selkuth. Uh, I, I, I'm afraid, uh, YB, you have to open the dictionary or Google to know the meaning. I myself don't, don't know the meaning. 
but uh, two years ago, she launched another book oh. called Paracosm. Uh, that also is something that YB has to. Now I will Google that. Yeah, I I I, I need YB's help. Is it possible because the book, the the Selkos, Selkos, the second book, is already in the press, but I can stop press, and if you can honor us with a message from YB. It's my pleasure. Uh, and, I will do that. And, so. and, but I need it very fast, within one week. Is it possible? <laughs> within one, because, uh, because otherwise, uh, I will have problem with the press, the printing. Inshallah, it's possible. Uh, it's possible. Whom, whom do I contact, please? Uh, Dr. Adli. Okay, thank you. Thank yeah, you very Dr. much, Adli. Prof. I'm so okay. sorry. Thank you very much. Salam alaikum. And a big applause to the daughter of Dr. Omar. Uh, <clears throat> Salaamu Alaikum. Wa alaikum as -salam. Uh, Where are you? I'm here. I'm here. On your, on your left. Sorry, right. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, my right. <laughs> um, um, I'm not sure if this, if this is the right forum for me to ask this question, but I have two questions for you and also the rector of IIUM. Um, the first thing is, I want to know what will be the direction of this university after this new management has taken over? Because previously we were, I do not know, I mean like I'm getting a bit emotional, but then we were forced to do research. Our promotion depends on research. Uh, although, for example, as an academic staff, uh, we teach more than 12 credit hours per semester, somehow that does not count when we apply for our promotion because promotion is only based on research. No research, no promotion. And then the sad part is we don't, we don't have the right environment to do research. We don't have the facility do, to do research. We don't have the postgraduate students to do research. But yet again, we are forced to do research. So I want to know what is going to be the direction of this university, you know, in that respect for the academic staff. My second question, if you allow me to ask, is what is going to be the future of international staff? Quite lately, we have lost, we have lost a lot of people, particularly the international staff, because of the direction of the university by the previous management. We have lost. Even quite recently, I'm from Kuliaf Engineering, from the mechanical department. My name is Muhammad Sultan Ibrahim. I'm from the mechanical department. We have lost about four international staff in this semester alone. And I think uh, if this trend continues, I do not know, I mean, what is going to be the future of this university. The international staff, they are feeling insecure. The future is not guaranteed. And I'm sure there are many international staff in this university that they are having plan B, perhaps. So I want to know, either from you, I'm sorry if I'm asking this question in a wrong forum, but I want to know either from you, this is the first time I'm addressing a minister. <laughs> so I want to know either from you or from the Honorable Rector, what is going to be the future of IIUM staff in that respect. Thank you very much. This is the future of IUM where you can address the minister directly. We believe in freedom of speech, we believe in consultation, and we believe in the, dig in the dignity of the academics. But I think what you're asking me about is more into administration stuff, which I think the rector and the senate have better answer for that. But please allow me, Tansri to say that, yes, research is very pertinent in any universities, provided the ecosystem must be there. If there is no supporting ecosystem for research and you're forcing the staff to do research, actually, you're being unjust to them. So I make sure that justice will always be prevailing in this university in these coming days. With the fate of 
international staff. I think the biggest problem that been faced by IIUM is a problem of funding. But have faith in your rector, have faith in your senate, and have faith in this new government. We try our best to make sure that the welfare of every academic staff will be taken care of. And university is not all about writing scopers ISI papers. It's not all about, you know, producing papers where you're selling your integrity or you're compromising your integrity just to score some points to get yourself promoted. No. Integrity is the most important thing in one acad in, 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 in academics life. So for me, when you're talking about university, it should, it should be a place not only for, to make research, but also as a place for teaching and learning. It's a place where you exchange idea. It's a place where the intellectuals are breed. It's a place where knowledge will produce. It's a place where you find a group of people working to, together to serve the community. Without serving the community, the existence of intellectuals are useless. So we will make sure the future of this university, everybody will be an asset to the community. Not only in Malaysia, but to the whole Muslim world. And Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Yeah. Assalamualaikum, oh. Baby Menteri. Uh, I'm a student. My name is Ahmad Farhami Rosli from ICOL, third year, second, third year, first semester. Firstly, I would like to congratulate uh, your appointment as the new president of this university. Thank you. Uh, my question is, uh, speaking on behalf of my colleague in ICOL, because as we know, ICOL, IAUM is unique and ICOL is unique also because ICOL is the only law school in Malaysia that offer program uh, Bachelor of Law Sharia. So we need to, we need to produce more uh, Sharia scholars that understand Sharia properly, not just hudud, chopping the hand, but, but wider than that. The makasit, social justice and whatsoever. So basically, uh, doctor, my concern is about uh, the, the studies in the, in the fifth year. Because basically, most of us, uh, there are a few students do not further the study in the fifth year, uh, fifth year, fifth year because due to the financial uh, financial problem. So my question is, or maybe suggestion, uh, I hope the minister of education, the minister and minister of education, uh, create uh, an initiative to. To ask more the student uh, to further their studies in uh, LLBS Sharia, because uh, currently there are not even any scholar, any scholarship for us to further the studies. So that is my concern from my kuliah, and that's all, doctor. Thank you for the beautiful speech for us. Thank you. I just can't make any promises on fund and money, monetary things on any scholarship and whatnot, due to the current situation of our economy. But I think Tan Sri and his team will be more than willing to find certain means to assist students in need. I'm not sure how, but I believe that Tan Sri has the Midas touch. He has done that in USM, he has done that in USIM, and I think he will also bring that in UIA. But on my part, what I can promise is, once our economy back to normal, once our economy, you know, grow beyond what it is now, I will try my best to help the students, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, thank you so much for this useful 
an encouragement session. Uh, my name is Sharifa Bahar. I am from Afghanistan. Uh, students uh, from uh, computer science. I have one question and one point to share to Honorable Dr. Mazli and to everyone in this uh, program. Uh, my question is, uh, may you explain that how we can, you, this university, and everyone can make the UIA as an Oxford for Muslim countries? And more than that, not an Oxford uh, for Muslim nation. Mm, we can make it in collaboration, all of us, as an Oxford university in the world. It is not impossible. It is possible. And then my point is that how we can do and UIA can do for this nation that they should think. They should come out with their own solution, with their own ideas, with their own thoughts. We shouldn't rely on Google. We shouldn't rely that much on uh, Western resources. Thank you so much. OK. Khaili Mamnoon. Khaili Mamnoon Khanoon. Uh, yes, thank you for your, for your faith in IAUM. Yes, you're right that uh, we can be the Oxford of Muslim world and even be more than Oxford if we want, if we have faith in, in, in ourselves. Uh, but again, I think we should start with ourselves. Everybody should contribute the least, not the least. Everybody should contribute with their ultimate maximum. And for students, just like I mentioned earlier, please read. Please, please push yourself beyond your boundaries. Not only by reading, but also exploring the territories of knowledge that have not gone before, that we have not known before. And not only that, please make yourself useful, not only to your friends, not only to your family, but to the community and the society. And I would encourage our international students just like I always mention to my students <laughs> to mix around with the local learn Bahasa Melayu you must never leave this university unless you can make an essay in Bahasa Melayu yeah. okay and not only that I always encourage my student to go and work part-time whether at Pasar Malam whether at any stores, at any places, just to get the exposure. I used, just like I shared my, my experience with my, my students, when I was at your age, when I was studying in Jordan, I used to hang around at certain bookshops and certain groceries just to meet with the locals. And I still have until now my adopted family, Jordanian. And, and now they're talking of, they, they started talking uh, I mean, amongst the Jordanians saying that now they have a Jordanian person as a Minister of Education in Malaysia. You must make people feel like that with you. You must make Malaysian feel that you are Malaysian when you are here. <laughs> and by that, you would contribute a lot to this university. Thank you very much. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Yeah, it's, uh, hold on. Yeah. Excuse me, uh, YB Dr. Mazli. Oh. Saya, saya, MC. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't have question. It's just that I, I, I can see that we have like uh, six, seven um, persons are uh, queuing for question and answer. 20 uh, of them. Six, seven. Okay. Okay. Is it okay? You want to entertain the six of them or maybe you, you want to go with two or maybe three? Five. Okay. Can we have only five questions? So maybe we can collect all the questions. Is it okay? Ah, ah, okay. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Muhammad Abdul Aziz. I Ladies mean... first. <laughs> okay. As an international Islamic university, I think we okay. respect <laughs> ladies. Okay. Gender equality. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Uh, I am Fari Baatai. When there are two ladies, I don't know which one to give priorities. <laughs> okay. I, I think we give to Madam right. Putri first, okay. and then we go to... Alright. Okay, Assalamualaikum. Alaikum I'm uh, Putri from Kulia, 
of economics, right? But I. <laughs> Uh, I'm Masli from K IRK. <laughs> right. Um, my question is, uh, I think you forgot to uh, say uh, assalamualaikum or hello to Gambang. Oh, uh, please don't. Assalamualaikum forget. warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, Gambang. <laughs> right. Um, and and Pago. Okay. Yes. So, um, when is Gambang going to be fully open? Oh. Okay. Right. I'm not. I'm not from CFS, but my son is in CFS, but he's in Kuantan. Right. But I think the CFS students um, is a one big family, so they need to be together. So they need to have their own home, house. Right, so I think I've been to Gambang, it's uh, nearly ready, but there are only about 700 students, um, and it's in the middle of nowhere, right? So I think you need to put the CFS students there and make it alive, right? Okay. Uh, at the moment, it's, uh, it's uh, empty, you see? Uh, so. I think you also need to take care of uh, CFS Gambang. Thank okay. you. Okay. I've asked about Dato Wan Helmi. He told me June next year. June next year, inshallah. By June next year. Is, is that okay, Madam Putri? Your son is here. Yeah? By June next year, am I right? Okay, by June next year, inshallah. Gambang will open its campus. Okay. Yes, please. Tafadali. Okay. Again, salam alaikum. Wa alaikum as salam. Uh, I am so happy. I am here uh, more than 30 years. Uh, I was in education ministry of Iran. And uh, my request is that uh, in this university, uh, around, uh, I think, 10 years, uh, because in two Kulia education and uh, KICT, uh, I study and uh, I do some project about education. And that's my pleasure. If you let me, I introduce and demonstrate my project to Education Ministry of Malaysia, and um, I want to know your idea and uh, how I can share my experience. Okay, inshallah, I think you can communicate with Dr. Adli. I would be more than happy to listen to your idea. Okay, thank you. Khaili Wa alaikum salam. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. My name is Mohammed Abdulaziz. I'm studying in Kuli of Engineering, Megatronics Engineering. Mm -hmm. So I'm here almost four years in Malaysia. So today my question is not mine. Actually, it's the question of 6,700 international students. So one question is always uh, international students wants to ask the professor, teachers, even you. That one is the immigration issue and the EMGS issue. <laughs> immigration and EMGS. This is the issue. So, when we submit our documents to the immigration in UI, after that, they lost our documents. And we again print and give them. And finally, when it comes to the end, they say, brother, you are in Obaresti. It's not my questions. It's 6,700 student questions. Then they force us to pay. If you want to see, I have one slip. So for, we pay. After the two months, three months, Obaresti. And sometimes for some students, it's become a trap. Many students, one Syrian, Sister I saw, one Bangladeshi brother, Shahed I saw, 
Nigerian brother, they become blocked and they go back to their countries during their end of studies. So it's very pathetic for them and for us. So we hope we, you will soon solve the issue of EMGS and immigration for IIOM students. Okay, thank you. Bohot shukriya. Okay. Where are you from, brother? I'm from Bangladesh. Bangladesh, Bundu, Kamunaso. Okay, thank you. Okay. It's very unfortunate immigration is not within the authority of my ministry. I wish, I always wish that immigration is under my priority. So I, I could ask them to speed up the process. But never mind, I will talk to my, to the Minister of uh, Home Affairs, in which immigration is under his authority, to make sure IIUM, uh, to make sure 6,700 IIUM students will never live, uh, will never be deprived anymore. I will speak to him. Okay. So when it comes to, while EMGS, my name is Faizul Haq, uh, President of Postgraduate Student Society, International Islamic University, Malaysia. I like to congratulate Honorable Education Minister Dr. Mazli Malik for being appointed as the President and Professor Tansri Datu Julkifli Abdurajak for being appointed as the Rector of International Islamic University, Malaysia. Actually, Minister, I don't have a too much question. Only I got a chance to congratulate you by through this question session on behalf of Postgraduate Student Society and CPS, Center for Postgraduate Studies. So I would like to congratulate you. Thank and you very much. I can see that our all of the international and local students here, they are happy to see you as a president of International Islamic University, Malaysia. We don't have too much question about our students. Only few things we need to clarify with you that some of them already inform you some international issues. I feel also too that if you could uh, speed up the system for the VEL approval, VEL, visa approval letter, mm -hmm. before end of, uh, before beginning the semester, once people get the offer letter, during that time, if uh, within short time they can get the approval letter, you can reach your highest number of the students from all over the country because I can see there is a lot of students they receive the offer letter but the problem is they cannot come to the Malaysia before start their semester in terms of the processing of the well approval. Second things, I like to request you uh, to have a scholarship that already you have mentioned that is be uh, is depends on fund but as I remember that you like to love the students as I feel that you like to uh, have a friendship with the students so among the among the students I feel that if you could arrange from some uh, Arabian countries or others international organization to have some scholarship for International Islamic University during your presidentship, it will be great for us. Thank you very much. <laughs> and I would like to request you to have any program with our postgraduate student society. I'd like to thank our CPS who always help us. Thank you very much. Okay, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I will try my best, brother, inshallah. Okay, I think we go for a last um, question. Your choice. Yeah, only last question. Uh, my name is Muhammad Fizuddin Mihamid. Can uh, you speak louder, brother? Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay. Uh, my name is Muhammad Fizuddin Mihamid. I am from Koe, Kuala of Engineering. Uh, my question is simple. Regarding to your ambition to make IIM to become expert, what is the minimum, minimum KPI you want to get uh, to reach that level? Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I think okay. we should... Okay. okay. I believe in the autonomy of university. It is not me to determine the KPI of the university or the KPI of the staff. It is the staff themselves who, who will put the KPI for themselves. It is the university who will put the KPI for themselves. But I believe that Tansri Rector has told me he doesn't believe in KPI. 
but he will make sure the ecosystem of public intellectual, the ecosystem of the university will produce more intellectuals and more intellectual activities in this university and that will push this university to become the Oxford of the Muslim world. Thank you. Okay. Alhamdulillah. I think for the rest of the questions, maybe like um, Yang Berhormat Dr. Mazi mentioned just now, that his uh, office is always open for any comments, suggestions uh, onwards for IIUM purposes. Okay, inshallah. So I think, thank you so much, Yang Berbahagia, Yang Berhormat Dr. Mazli. I'm so nervous. I'm so sorry. Uh, thank you very much uh, for being here. Hello. Uh, and, and for your inspiring lecture. My pleasure. Alhamdulillah. Okay. So we're going to have a very uh, short uh, photography session. Um, can I have you on... Um, in the middle. Yeah, in the oh, middle. Yeah. So that the photographer can be on the stage uh -huh. to take a photo, uh, the photo.